Convergence insufficiency is a very common problem that I see in the clinic. Luckily, it's fairly easy to treat with vision therapy, but it can also go undiagnosed for a long time. And that's what I want to explain more about today, how you might know that your child has convergence insufficiency and what we can do about it. So some of the common symptoms of convergence insufficiency would be a child that avoids reading or avoids anything where they're, they're up close, they're having to use their eyes to look at something up close. When they do that, it may cause them headaches or nausea. They may get car sick a lot if they're doing anything up close in the car. They typically don't complain about this because they don't know exactly how to describe it, but double vision can be a symptom of convergence insufficiency. So if your child is avoiding anything having to do with up close work, this is something we want to rule out. One other way you can tell if they have a, a problem with this is that when they read or do up close work, they cover one of their eyes and this keeps them from seeing double. So they may not necessarily avoid doing up close work, but this is how they cope with it. They cover one of their eyes up. So how can you tell if your child has this? It's a fairly simple test, and this is how we measure it in the office, too. So you want to get something like this, just a, a fixation target. You can use a pen or a pencil or use your finger and have your child focus on this with their eyes. And you want to be watching them while they do this to make sure that both of their eyes are pointing at it. So you are going to ask them to follow this in as you move it very slowly towards their nose. As it gets closer to their nose, you should notice that their eyes turn inward. If you notice that their eyes are not, one of their eyes is not following it, so it looks like one is turning in but one is staying out, that is essentially their break point. So you want to find where both eyes are following it and then when it gets to the point where one of them turns out, that's their break point. So they should be able to get very close to their nose before it breaks apart. Once it breaks apart, they should say that they see two. So ask them to follow it and to tell you when they see two objects. So when we do it, we measure it. So we use a little ruler like this and we actually measure how close they can get to their nose. And we do it several times because sometimes they can get it on the first couple of tries. But if you do it several times, you can actually see that their eye gets more tired and more tired and their measurement where they break apart or their eye turns out may be further away. And so that's something you want to look for is that you want to see how, how much strength they have and how they can go all the way into the nose, but how many times they can do it as well. So if you do that and your child breaks apart pretty much anywhere from, from about arm's length in to about here, they likely have a problem with that. So why does this matter? What do we do about this? So like I mentioned before, it can cause a world of symptoms and it's very uncomfortable for a child. And sometimes this can go all the way through adulthood. I've had, had people in their 30s and 40s that have had this for their whole life and they've just learned to adapt with it. But luckily, if we find it and we enroll that person into vision therapy, and we work pretty hard and we do the exercises and the activities that we prescribe in therapy, this can typically be, be cured in about six months. Sometimes it takes longer than that, just depending on how deep it is and, and if they're having some suppression where they're turning one of their eyes off, we have to let that eye wake back up so it can cooperate more. But this is a, an easy thing to fix. It doesn't take very long if you do the work. But the key with this is just knowing when your child has it and when to ask questions if they're having problems and really try to get them to explain to you what they're seeing and, and why they're possibly not doing up close work. So if you have any more questions about that, feel free to send me an email. I'll put my email address below and I'll be glad to explain it to you. Thanks for watching.